Hey East Views, Josh again here. Today I get to unpack with you the shortest verse in all of scripture. You may have heard it before, but it's within the context of the passage we're reading this week in John chapter 11 when Jesus raises Lazarus from the dead. And you look at this story and there's a lot going on here, but there's this famous verse that most of us know. Um, it's John eleven thirty five. Jesus wept. Right. And so the context around it is he shows up after he Jesus had heard um, that Lazarus is dying. He shows up three days later and Lazarus is already dead. And he's confronted kind of with this reality when people come to him, Mary and Martha, talking about how he, he had died. And if Jesus had been there, that might not have happened. Right. He had the power to ensure that he was healed. Um, and so Jesus, after it says, um, in verse 33, when Jesus saw her weeping and the Jews who had come with her also weeping, he was deeply moved. And we'll come back to that in a second. In the spirit and greatly troubled. And he said in verse 34, where have you laid him? And they said to him, Lord, come and see. Thirst, verse 35, Jesus wept. So the Jews said, see how he loved him. But some of them said, could, he, could not he who opened the eyes of the blind man also have kept this man from dying? <clears throat> it's a great question. And honestly... I don't think four minutes is enough time to unpack why Jesus chooses to, or why we there's miraculous healings that happen sometimes and other times they don't happen. Um, but what's fascinating about the story here is that even though Jesus knows what's about to happen, that he's about to raise Lazarus from the dead, he still joins the people in their sorrow and suffering because not it's not just for show. And Jesus is deeply moved in his spirit. It says, Again, in verse 33, he, when they saw when he saw them weeping, he was deeply moved in spirit and greatly troubled. And it's hard, to, like, translating that um, from the Greek is there's a couple different opinions. But something I found really powerful is that some of the translations talk about how, how he felt internally was even more sorrow than the tears that he was displaying, verse 35. But, Jesus, like he was crying in front of them, but inside he hurt even more about the idea of his friend, Lazarus, being dead. And I think there's an even greater spiritual truth for you and I today, too, because even though Jesus has already paid the price so that you and I could have life, and even though we already know the victory is won for those who are in Christ Jesus, that we have new life coming to us, we, we have access to new life right now, and there is hope beyond the grave... Jesus, even though he knew that was coming for Lazarus, he still wept in his suffering. And I, I think it illustrates again that God's, God's heart breaks when you and I suffer in this side of eternity. That when you and I experience hardships in this life, God's not just like, okay, like get through it, figure it out, you're gonna be fine. His heart breaks for us when we have a family member who passes away or when there's a hard financial situation that comes or a sickness comes on our family or a, a relative is going through something hard. God's heart breaks in those situations because he cares deeply and he chooses to join us in our suffering. That's why he died, so that he could join us in our suffering. That's why he came to this earth, so he could join us in our suffering and then show us the path to better life. So. Maybe you're in that situation today. Maybe you feel like you're really suffering today. And just know that Jesus chooses to join you in that suffering. His heart breaks for you. And he's there to comfort you and guide you and show you along the path to life. So I hope that's encouraging to you, Eastview.